I'm the ghost girl gamer, but you can call me Gigi. It's dark, and you know what that means. Time for a horror game. This game is called Hell City, and right away you can see Bloody Newspaper, the New York Survival Guide. What started as a small incident on Friday now appears to be day one of the apocalypse. Initially referred to as the Scourge, creatures are attacking citizens throughout the city. Citizens are advised to leave. Mr. Harvey Sludge, a nightclub owner in downtown Manhattan, observed, whether it's a quick swinging monkey thing or a huge stomping monster, they all have one thing in common. They love New York. And who doesn't? So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Ooh, <laughs> I have a little chopping axe. Ooh, okay. Chapter one, riding the rail. Okay, so this is gonna be a text-based game with some options, so if you don't mind the sound of my reading, uh, keep watching, otherwise, shoo, we don't want you here. It's now been a week since they started talking about the Scourge on TV. You got grounded in the Bronx flat of a friend who left to sell some pot a few days ago. He's not been back, and a few hours ago, the electricity died. Yesterday, you heard shooting and yelling and looked out to see one of those things. Far too many legs, and it ripped through a National Guard truck like a hurricane through New Orleans. You've run out of pot. Time to leave. So leave the flat at once, or search for useful stuff. Now, I've always said that if I was in like a zombie apocalypse scenario, I would search for supplies and then vacate the premises, so I'm gonna go with that. You start searching the flat in the hopes of finding something to keep whatever is out there at bay. In the kitchen, you finally manage to find a big knife that looks as though it was meant to cut meat rather than broccoli. Yes, you say to yourself, an excellent friend to take on my travels. Will you join me? Of course, you are still high. While tucking the knife into your coat to ready yourself to the dark streets, you hear some metallic scratching from the window. Okay, metallic scratching? Either a person or the monsters have metal on them. Ooh, let's, oh, let's investigate. You carefully peek out of the window. The fire ladder is jiggling as if someone or something were making their way up. Okay, nope, time to go. Bye bye. You stumble out of the front door of the house. The plan is to make it through the inner city southwards to Jersey where your family lives. The streets are dark and the only lights visible are from distant fires and some empty cars. You can see an APC block away. The tank looks undamaged, but there are at least ten corpses with missing limbs strewn about it. They remind you of some of the dodgy kebabs you have eaten. You can't make out much more in the darkness. Alright, approach it or move past it. Uh, let's see. Corpses? You move past the corpses. You don't stop at the corpses. You make your way forward as quietly as you can try to ignore the disturbing noises and vile smells. From the distance, you can see a group of heavy tanks speeding down the avenue. One of them comes to a grinding halt right in front of Tremont Station. It looks like they're securing the area. The other tanks head south. A large group of pedestrians come running behind the tanks. Most of them seem to run into the station. Could there be a train waiting? Uh... Keep watching or run towards the station. Let's keep watching just in case. I mean, if it's if it's safe, we can always go right back in. You watch the scene suspiciously, thinking that you could always make a quick dash towards the station once the situation clears. So you wait, but suddenly a hot pain rips through your guts. They fall on the floor in one big blob. You're thrown around as darkness engulfs you. You see the reason those people were running for their lives and the nice pattern that your intestines have made. <laughs> so we are dead. Luckily, uh, the game has a low checkpoint feature, so hopefully that means I can just go back one chapter. Oh, excellent. Okay. So, uh, we're gonna move past the scene like before, but this time we're gonna run towards the station. You sprint towards the station and join the crowd of running people. You see a soldier sitting in the tower of a tank who's waving people towards the station. Suddenly, the soldier starts shaking, then screaming. He trips out of the tank with another crew member, and they crumble to the ground, motionless, with burning skin flaking off them. Maybe this is your last chance to make it out of the city. The people might have a good reason to all run here, but maybe they're like lemmings to the slaughter. I'm gonna keep going in the station. I, I don't know, just a vibe. 
You run past the tank and its unlucky crew and dash through the open gates of the train station while an acidic smell snarls at your nose. The people rush towards the stairs and you shout at a sporty looking young man who runs beside you. In between breaths, he shouts that only a few people made it through the ambush of the creatures. The soldiers can't stop them. This is the last chance to get an evacuation train out of the city. So follow the mob or try to make it on our own. Groups, usually better than solo, so we'll follow the mob. You push towards the sea of bodies past, uh, pardon me, you push through the sea of bodies towards the train platforms. You hear screams from behind you where the oldest and weakest were trailing. A lady in a uniform screams at you to hurry up! Your pace quickens and the sea of bodies becomes a tidal wave. The panic-filled screams grow louder as you reach the platform with 50 other Scourge lottery winners. Shit! There's no train waiting. You've got to make a decision. Hold your ground or run along the railway. Um, I have a knife and I don't think anyone here has guns, so we're gonna run along the railway. You start running on the railway, hoping that the others will be shredded rather than you. Ugh. The screams and chattering of creatures gets more distant. Even though you've laughed your way through a hundred horror films, you can't look back. You half laugh and half cry when you see the train in front of you. Even though you can barely breathe, seeing the train gives you a burst of speed. Chapter 2, we made it! Beacon of Hope. You can only hear your footsteps as you run along the track, a train station right in front of the platform. You can't see any lights, but you can make out movement further down the platform. The hair on your neck stands on end, but everything is freaking you out now, and there is no bong to calm you down. What next? Stay in the shadows or move towards the platform. Normally, I would say move towards the platform. I'm gonna stay in the shadows just in case. The movements in the shadows are enough to keep you, the, keep you from the platform for now. You slow down to a near silent walk as you approach the dark side of the train. The security hatch to the lower right is open and you think you can hear whispers as you creep closer. Everything seems to be quiet on the far side of the train, and you're starting to wonder if entering a confined space is a better choice than staying outside, able to run in more directions and make an escape. <sighs> okay, let's go through the hatch. You enter the train and gingerly make your way forward through the long rows of clean but empty seats. You notice a smell of coffee in the air. It's an unexpected bit of comfort in this deadly nightmare. You take it nice and slow. You've seen and heard what those creatures can do. What seemed like a deadly comedy before is now deadly real. The smell of coffee gets stronger with each pace, and in the dim light you can see the shadow of a person. Okay, they're probably dead, so I'm gonna stay in the shadows. You wait in the shadows for a while before shuffering loudly forward. Before you can make contact, the shadow twists and you see a gun raised up towards you. The blast rings out, catching you in your chest, and the bullet exits out of your back in a shower of blood and spine. Okay, he wasn't dead, so let's load our checkpoint. We'll stay in the shadows, we'll go in through the hatch, and this time we'll actually go towards the man. You clear your throat. <coughs> and the shadow twists towards you, rising out of its seat. Taking a deep breath, you stare into the hole of a magnum barrel. A strong, deep voice says in hushed tones, Be quiet in the Lord's name. These demons are everywhere. You stay quiet, looking at the man with the magnum. He's a squat, bald man of about 50 years with some sort of PVC suit, a priest's collar, and some semi-military equipment. A fiery maniac look rides in his eyes wait or try to disarm him. He did tell us to be quiet. He didn't try to kill us right away, so let's wait. He wipes sweat off his glistening bald head and gives you a frightened glare. Then he exhales. His eyes seem less fierce and he lowers his magnum. He starts. Child, the apocalypse has begun. Everything I know I shall tell you and I hope it will save you. God is in the retreat from an enemy that is far beyond all that is imaginable. I know that these creatures get slowed down by the sight of religious symbols, all of them. <laughs> Maybe God really does love us all. It must be an object that has been used as any part of worship, so carrying those glitzy charms from the Elvis shops in Vegas won't save you. 
part of his negotiation force from the Vatican Guard. We have a history deeper than you could ever know, although many of my brethren refused to believe that these demons existed. As soon as they realized that religious symbols slowed the scourge down, the government started working with us. We don't know much about Satan and his minions, but the breath and blood of these creatures is like acid and burns through clothing and flesh. Confined rooms with this blood should be avoided because the acid releases a poisonous vapor. The New World is a dangerous place. The only advice I can give you is to head out of the station to St. Joseph's Cathedral. My brethren and there are there and may protect you. So we're gonna leave the station. You rush through the doors of the station like a rat slipping through the claws of a corridor. You step right, press yourself against the walls, and look around. You hear a deep scratching, clicking, and the staccato of heavy, misshapen legs stomping over the platform just outside. You don't dare move, and you close your eyes, and wait until there's no sound left but your thumping heart that's trying a hammer hole into your chest. Keep calm, carry on. You turn to face whatever caused the noise. You realize one of the beasts followed you up the tracks and it pounces on you! It rips you open like a fat man at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Okay. Oh, man, it checkpointed us really far back. No, hold on. Oh, I don't know where it checkpointed us. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure. You pluck up some courage and move towards the platform. The movement is actually just a twisted litter bag snap near a bench. You climb up onto the platform and look at the train, which sits there in silence and darkness. It looks like the place is deserted and there is no cavalry there to help you. You see the entrance to the rest of the station. You approach the big doors made of security glass. It seems quiet inside. You pause and take a deep breath, but behind you you hear a sudden noise from the direction of the train. Nope, don't turn around. You rush through the doors to the station like, okay, here's where we were, so we're gonna explore the station instead of checking outside. The station is dark, and there are a few small shops in there that have metal shutters pulled out. The exit to the outside of the station is only a short distance away from you. Maybe it's time to leave the rail system and keep on moving through the streets of your city. Who knows if those creatures will come up to the rail tracks once they have finished feasting on their human Happy Meal. Those fat bastards. So yeah, let's go out into the street. You walk up the stairs and get to the street. The outside is cold and desolate. Maybe the area is clearer than most. There's St. Joseph's Cathedral, close by, and you can see a flickering light in the bell tower. Maybe that's your chance to find some shelter after all. The guy said go to the church. Let's go to the church. You carefully move towards the silhouette of St. Joseph's. You're too tired to run, but you manage a quick walk through the shadows to the hope that is flickering light of St. Joseph's. You smell acid and keep twisting your head around as paranoia and freakish shadows threaten to overwhelm you as your search for refuge. Hey, chapter three, we made it. Oh, awesome. Okay, I'm gonna call it here because I don't know how much longer this goes. Um, if it ends up being short, like one more chapter, I'll probably continue it on in this part. If it ends up being more than that, we'll make this two parts. Uh, so just in case, I am the Ghost Girl Gamer. You can call me Gigi. See you in part two. <laughs>